Hi there, good afternoon. Well, good evening now. <clears throat> and my name is Alex. I'm going to be your facilitator for the IECAC virtual visit with the University of Tampa. Um, so just some quick housekeeping things. Um, in this Zoom meeting, you will only have the capability to chat with um, Veronica through Q&A. So you should see that feature at the bottom. So any questions that you may have, um, you can submit them through there. <clears throat> your camera and your microphone have been disabled for this meeting, so you will not be able to share your video um, or turn your microphone on. And um, so again, if you have any questions, please direct them to that Q&A. Um, this recording will be available on the website after this. I don't know if it'll be immediately after. It might take a day or so, um, but you, all the sessions are being recorded and they're, they're going to be um, found at the IACAC.org website. Um, additionally, there's a bunch of different sessions going on for very many different colleges. Um, so if you have um, interest in, in many more college, please see the listings as well um, on the IACAC website. So I'm going to turn it over now um, to Veronica at the University of Tampa. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you stick around with me until the very end, I'm going to have a surprise for you. So you definitely are going to want to stick around. Um, the way it's going to work is I'm going to share my screen, go and give you a brief overview, highlight some different programs and areas about UT, and then that Q&A feature is there. So you can ask me questions as I go through the presentation, um, but I will wait until the end to answer them. So let me go ahead and share my screen now and we'll get started. Okay, so just a little bit of background on me. Again, my name is Veronica. I'm a recent UT graduate. I graduated this past May of 2020. Um, in July, I started in this role. So pretty fresh. Um, I'm originally from the Chicagoland area myself. I'm from Vernon Hills, if anyone is familiar with the town up north. Um, and while I was a student at UT, I studied communication. I was involved on the dance team in Greek life, and I also worked in admissions. So I kept pretty busy. I loved my experience at UT so much so that I decided you know to come and work for UT so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share that with you today like I said be sure to stick around so I can answer all your questions and um, let you know about the surprise so if you don't already know the University of Tampa is located in West Central Florida just want to point this out so you can see where we are in relation to some neighboring cities so Orlando is about an hour away and Miami down here is about four hours away so um, students can sometimes go to Orlando and Miami on the weekends for a spring break trip um, my sophomore year my sorority and I went to Orlando um, to Disney World for $30 with the transportation and ticket included so that was an awesome trip if you're a Disney fan, you're definitely going to want to get season passes. So you'll commonly hear this area referred to as the Tampa Bay area. That encompasses the neighboring cities of St. Pete and Clearwater, um, and Tampa kind of in the middle here. So they both offer really fabulous beaches. Um, as a student, I would always go to the beach. That's really a big part of what drew me down to Tampa, especially coming from cold Illinois. Um, so you gotta take advantage of a lot of natural beauty on the weekends. Students can Uber there. You can take take a zip car, there's a lot of different options and it's about 30 minutes away, so not too far. And then of course there's a lot to do since we're in such a metropolitan area. There's a lot to do both on and off campus. Off campus specifically, if you're a sports fan, we've got the Tampa Bay Bucks, we've got Tampa Bay Lightning, the Rays, so some big major sport teams here. Um, and students will often get discounted tickets to those games, we'll provide a shuttle bus over there. I went to a lot of Lightning games, they're a lot of fun. So if you're a sports fan, great city. Um, and then if you're not, that's okay, there's a lot uh, to do in the downtown. So we have Curtis Hickson Park in this picture right here. They'll put together different events such as mac and cheese festivals, puppies in the park, winter wonderland with an ice rink, all sorts of free activities that you can see directly across from UT's campus. So as a student, sometimes I'd be sitting by the river, look across, hmm, like what's going on over there? And I could just walk over and check it out. And then this river walk here stretches for about three miles along the river. You can hop on and off and go to different restaurants and access different points downtown. And again, that's just directly across the bridge from UT. 
So some basic information on UT, we're a medium-sized institution. So not too big, not too small, roughly 9,600 students. Uh, we're independent, so we don't have any religious affiliation, and we're private, so it's the same cost for in-state and out-of-state tuition. Then we like to say that we have an urban environment with a campus feel. So a little bit of what I was describing, kind of having the best of both worlds is how I would put it. Um, if you have had the opportunity to step on our campus, you know what I'm talking about. If not, the best way I can put it is our campus is very self-contained. There aren't any major city streets running through it. You feel that college campus environment, but you have the accessibility to the downtown. So just across the bridge, you have a large metropolitan area. And we have wide representation from Massachusetts to Madagascar. So all 50 states are represented, um, over 130 different countries. So we really have a wide range of representation, a really diverse student body, which I loved as a student, um, mingling with people who are so different for me, and that definitely helped prepare me for the workforce. Um, and then in addition, the average student studies about a thousand miles away from home. So especially coming from Illinois, you're not alone. A lot of students are in the same boat coming from further away. So that's kind of a unique situation at the University of Tampa. Um, and then we like to say that our students are metropolitan, active, and independent. So metropolitan and that you like the city, active, you want to get involved both on and off campus, and independent and in that you can study further away from home. So in terms of academics, our class sizes are pretty comparable to high school, roughly 22 students in a class. Um, so they're about, you know, small size classroom, you really get that personalized educational experience with the professor, a 17 to 1 faculty to student ratio, and our programs are accredited. So you can go out and check on our website, um, depending on what you're studying, to make sure that your program is accredited. For example, business schools, AACSB accredited, really important rank and accreditation for a business school. So keep that in mind. We are also part of the Coalition for College. So what this is, is an invitation only app. Um, schools that are a part of it are typically more socioeconomically and ethnically diverse, and students will graduate with lower loan debt. So you can find us on the Common App the Coalition app or UT's app. All of those apps are treated the same. This is just another one of them. So at UT, we offer something called the baccalaureate experience. This is where you're taking classes that might be um, unrelated to your field of study. So for example, as a communication major, I was taking classes in you know, math and science and really getting that well-rounded education so I can have critical thinking skills um, and have that kind of full package. So you'll be taking some courses that might be outside of your field of interest, and you'll also be placed in a seminar course um, it's just a one credit course that meets once a week for an hour with a faculty advisor in your field. So for example, if you're interested in studying marine biology, you'd be with a marine biology faculty advisor, marine bio students, and they're going to help you transition from high school to college, navigate potential career paths, make sure that you're signed up for the right courses, that sort of thing. So you have someone to guide you through that process in the first year. We also have an honors program. So the criteria for the honors program is a 3.7 unweighted GPA or a 3.5 with AP and IB courses. So if you are invited into the honors program, you'll know at the time of your acceptance. It's optional, so it's an invitation there for you to accept or decline, but there are some awesome perks um, that come along with being involved in the honors program. So for example, we have research fellowships, we have honors courses, honors housing, um, and then a really cool opportunity, any Harry Potter fans, this dining hall is where Harry Potter was filmed. Um, this is also Oxford University in England, a very prestigious and expensive university. Uh, we'll choose three honor students a semester to go study there, and UT will subsidize the cost. So you study at Oxford on UT's dime, which is really um, something to take advantage of if you're interested.
So we have over 200 different areas of study. So there's a lot to choose from. You could double major, major and minor in a field that are unrelated. I also wanna point out that we are direct admit for all of our programs with the exception of nursing, education, athletic training, and then our performing arts majors are audition based. So there's a lot to choose from if you're coming in you know, undecided or thinking about um, majoring in two different areas. So at UT, we like to really emphasize learning by doing. So taking that hands-on approach and taking what you learn in the classroom and applying it to the real world, whether that be through internships or utilizing the different um, resources on site. So for example, if you are a student studying entrepreneurship, you would be in our innovation and collaboration building, utilizing these think pods right here, um, shark tank kind of pitch rooms. So you're pitching your business proposals. Um, if you're a marine bio student, we have a field station for marine vessels. So you're going out, you're doing research, collecting samples. Our nursing students are working with dummies that can give birth to twins, bleed, sweat, you know, about as close to a human as you can get. So really neat. And I just want to point out in regards to our nursing program, we do have the number one ranked hospital in Florida, just five minutes away, Tampa General Hospital. Um, and we are a top ranked nursing program with almost 100% NCLEX passing rate. So we're really proud of our students. Um, and this is our latest building on campus, the Graduate Health Studies Building. It houses our graduate PA program as well as our nursing labs. So again, going along with the learning by doing and hands-on approach, this is our UTTV station, radio station, financial trading room where students trade real money in real time, a fab lab for fine arts students with a 3D printer. So you get the idea, really, you're not being talked to and talked at and just taking notes. You're actually um, getting practice and experience in your field. And then this building right here, this is the rendition for the Furman Center for the Arts. This is actually going to be opening in the spring of 2021. It'll house our performing arts and our fine arts. It's going to be a 90,000 square foot building. Really excited for this building to open up. There is always a lot of construction on our campus because we're constantly adding buildings, renovating buildings. So even in my four years at UT, a lot has shifted. So in terms of internships, I highly recommend seeking out an internship at some time between your sophomore and your senior year once you start building those skills in the classroom. Um, UT is a great location for internships. The closest neighboring university is about 10 miles away. They need transportation to get into the downtown, whereas UT students don't. So we really own the internships. We have a lot of great partnerships with, you know, for example, the aquarium, the zoo, the Tampa Bay Bucks Stadium, Emily Arena, um, the SunTrust, the different financial firms downtown so a lot that's within walking distance and accessible to our students this bridge right here is what connects our campus to the downtown and we have a career service office on site they'll host internship fairs job fairs resume review days mock interviews um, drop-in sessions to make sure that you feel confident in that process um, and that you get those connections and start networking and building relationships when the time is right Study abroad, we have so many different opportunities at UT to study abroad, over a thousand different programs in 60 countries. It's probably my biggest regret um, about college since I did not study abroad. So if you have the opportunity, I definitely recommend it. Start looking into it um, your sophomore, even freshman year, so you can plan ahead and make sure that you can take the courses in a different country and that they'll transfer over. We also partner with Semester at Sea, which is a cruise ship sort of um, study abroad experience that'll stop in about 13 different countries. So that's a really awesome opportunity that I wish I would have done. So at UT, we really like to hone in on loving where you live and learn. I think this really holds true um, to living on campus. So especially coming from further away, coming from Illinois, um, you wanna make sure that you can make your home away from home and living on campus will really help you do so so that you can get involved and stay active and um, build relationships with people. I chose to live on campus um, throughout all three years, so it was a really great experience, um, and not to mention super convenient to just 
roll out of bed and get to class in like five minutes. Um, so with that said, first year students are prioritized to receive on campus housing as long as you submit your deposit prior to that May 1st deadline and it's going to be fully refundable up until then. So at UT, freshmen are not allowed to have vehicles, um, but after your freshman year, you can bring your vehicle down if you'd like. Uh, coming from Illinois myself, I did not bring my vehicle down until my junior year. I definitely didn't find it to be an issue. There are plenty of other ways to get around. For instance, the zip car you can rent um, from UT as long as you're 18. Um, you can rent bikes through UT's gym, you can take the water taxi, you can obviously walk into the city, and then a unique option um, to Tampa is this downtowner right here in the upper left hand corner. So that is a complimentary shuttle that'll take you anywhere within a three mile radius. It works like Uber so you can put in your point A to point B um, and it'll take you there. So you can use that to get to the grocery store or wherever it might be within three miles. So here are some different freshman um, residence halls. They're all pretty typical in the setup. Um, one's really not better than the other. I had friends that lived in almost all of them and we do have videos on our website if you wanna check out each residence hall and get a tour because they will vary um, a little bit, but they'll all be set up in a Jack and Jill style bathroom so you don't have any community bathrooms at all. Um, housekeeping will come and maintain those bathrooms once a week and you'll have a resident assistant on the floor um, as well as study rooms. So this right here is an image of what a typical freshman dorm room would look like. Very nice, really spacious, comes with everything that you need. Um, for me and my personal experience coming from Illinois, I scanned a lot of items at Bed Bath & Beyond in Illinois and then I was able to pick them up in Tampa which was a really convenient option so I didn't have to worry about schlepping things down here. And then here are some images of our upperclassmen residence halls. So these are set up to be more apartment style. You'll have a common living area, kitchen, um, four individual bedrooms, and a bathroom. So really nice option um, once you're an upperclassman. I lived in Palm Apartments, which are these ones right here, um, for about two years. In terms of campus safety and security, um, Tampa is a very safe area. We do have campus safety patrolling 24 seven on our campus, as well as blue lights located throughout. We also have a mobile alert system. So let's say there's inclement weather in the area, students will get a text to be notified immediately. And we also have gate card access to all of our residence halls. So you have to have Spartan ID card to get in, and then there'll be a campus safety officer stationed at the bottom of the residence hall just to monitor who's going up and down the elevators, coming in and out of the building, that sort of thing. Our brand new fitness facility opened up in 2016. It's probably one of my favorite spots on campus. Um, it's 40,000 square feet. It's free to students. You can take advantage of personal training, fitness classes, like um, I almost said Zoom. Wow. 2020 is really hitting um, spin, Zumba, and uh, other classes like that, and like CrossFit. So really awesome gym to um, take advantage of during your four years and maybe de-stress, decompress after a long day of classes. We are also an uh, NCAA Division II school with Division I beach volleyball. We're part of the Sunshine State Conference. If you are an athlete, I definitely recommend reaching out to the coaches sooner rather than later. And if not, um, you can always swipe your ID card and get into the games for free. So we'll shuttle students over to the hockey arena, um, some other popular sports to watch as a spectator are baseball, lacrosse, and basketball. We also offer intramurals, so if you just want to stay active and start a club team, if we don't have offer that club team already, you can do that as well. And then some application deadlines to take note of. Um, the first one that we're coming up on here is early action one. I also want to point out that all of these are non-binding. So if you apply any time between now and early action one, um, so November 15th, you should have a decision by December 15th. So just keep that time frame in mind as you're looking to hear back from schools. Um, and also if you're considering submitting your first semester senior year of high school grades you might want to take these deadlines into consideration and wait until the early action two or the regular decision period. Um, and we do operate on rolling admission. 
So as an incoming freshman, we're going to be needing a few different pieces of information from you. That includes your official high school transcript. You can just have your guidance counselor send that to us. Um, your essay is part of your application, and then a letter of recommendation as well. One is the minimum, you're welcome to submit more. Typically, we're going to be needing your ACT or SAT scores. However, we are test optional for the terms summer 2021, fall 2021, and spring 2022. So you are welcome to submit those, but we will not be looking at them. We won't be considering them. Um, they won't have a sway in your merit aid. We are truly test optional. So if there are any transfer students, it looks pretty similar. There is a transfer admissions counselor that will work specifically with you. Um, and the only difference really comes down to how many transfer credits you might have and whether or not we need your high school transcript or just your college transcript. All right, so everyone's favorite topic, cost. Um, in terms of cost, UT is roughly 42,000 sticker price, tuition and fees, room and board. That room and board number can fluctuate a little bit depending on um, if you're in a triple room, that might go down. If you elect to have a smaller meal plan, that can go down as well. But keep in mind about 97% of students receive some sort of financial aid. Our average aid package is roughly $11,000. So pretty generous to already take off that sticker price. Um, and then we do have a net price calculator. I definitely encourage you to check that out on our website. You can plug in some different numbers and it'll spit back out a cost that might be more realistic to you. So I know that price can be daunting, but keep in mind, um, stay on top of filling out the FAFSA that becomes available October 1st. That will let us know if you qualify for any governmental aid, um, UT need-based aid, um, things like that. And we also offer merit-based awards. So these are awards that you don't have to fill out a separate application for. For freshmen, this will range anywhere from $4,000 to $18,000, depending on your eligibility. So we'll be looking at your GPA and course rigor to determine your criteria. Typically, we'll look at your test scores and your GPA. But since we will be test optional for the terms that I mentioned, we'll be looking at GPA and course rigor to determine where you may fall between that $4,000 and $18,000 $18,000 range. So um, definitely getting rewarded for your hard work in high school, finally. And then ultimately, graduation from UT is the goal. So most of our graduates report having success after graduation. Um, as I mentioned, that career service office that we have on site, they will work with students even once they are alumni. So once you graduate, if you're um, having a tough time finding a job or you just want someone to look over your resume or need that extra, you know, that connection, or that networking opportunity, they're still a resource for you on campus. We also are military friendly, so we have the Army, Navy, and Air Force presence. Then lastly, if you haven't, just feel free to check us out on social media so you can stay up to date with some of the virtual events we'll be hosting throughout the year and connect with us that way. But I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and then um, if you want to start submitting some questions, I would be happy to answer those for you. And like I said, I'll still have a special announcement at the end, so you're going to want to stick around until I, I conclude, but I'll take any questions that you might have in that Q&A feature, whether that be about a specific program, um, my experience, what's the transition like from Illinois to Florida, anything like that, I will be happy to answer. So this question is, what are the opportunities for pre-med students? So typically pre-med students will go in and they'll choose a major like let's say biology and they'll have a pre-med faculty advisor. So you'll be with an advisor specific, you know, that works specifically with pre-med students to make sure that you are on the right track and provide you with those opportunities that you can receive in undergrad. So that advisor will really be that liaison and that person to connect you um, to those resources and to those opportunities. But I know a lot of students will have um, practice with Tampa General Hospital or they'll do different clinicals um, elsewhere at like an urgent care. So depending on you know, what your interest is and what you plan on doing, um, they will have better options. 
So what is the transition like from Illinois to Florida? Well, I can only speak from my experience, but for me, it was a very smooth transition. I was looking for a school that was a medium size, so that checked off the box, that was, you know, warmer climate, that offered a lot to do in the general area. So I found it to be a smooth transition. I got involved on campus. Um, the first few weeks, they'll table in the Vaughn Courtyard, so you can see all the different clubs and organizations, get involved, go to movie nights, and your RA will put together different events on your floor. So it's really easy once you start meeting people and everyone's in the same boat coming from further away from home to get involved, feel like you have a sense of community. And I really can't complain. Coming from Illinois to Florida, it was probably the best decision I've ever made. Um, if any parents are watching, I'm sorry, but I didn't return home. So there's a good chance that once you come here, you'll fall in love and you may not live permanently in Illinois, but who knows, maybe you like it. Um, what made me choose UT? So I kind of touched on this, but for me, it was a combination of things. Um, once I came on campus, I really fell in love with the environment. I knew that I wanted to go to a school that offered more than just the college campus um, scene and life. I really wanted to be part of a downtown. I wanted to have access to, you know, those internships and to go to the beach and to have kind of a, a life off campus. Um, and then those medium class sizes that really made for a personalized educational experience. I didn't feel like I was just, you know, a number in a big lecture hall. I felt like I could actually go to my professors and they knew my name. So the size, the location, um, that really sold it for me. And I absolutely loved my experience. What do we offer for criminology? So criminology is one of our majors. You can um, major or minor in it. I know that this um, CIA and the FBI will come and recruit on our campus. We have judicial court um, in our downtown district. So a lot of students will get internships, um, different courts or possibly with the FBI. I guess it just depends what you're looking to do. But like I mentioned, we have um, career service office that will host all those job and internship fairs. So you can really get some cool experience. Um, the police station is also like 0.2 miles away, it's a five minute walk. So um, a lot of opportunities for shadowing and internships. If I'm interested in taking graphic design, is a portfolio needed in my application? No, so you don't need to submit a portfolio at the time of your application. Is Greek life big on campus? Good question. So Greek life makes up about 20% of our um, student body, so it's, it's so one of those things that doesn't really make or break you as a student at UT. We have um, fall formal recruitment and we have a spring recruitment as well, where just some fraternities and sororities will recruit on campus. But it's really fun to um, be involved in Greek life, but it definitely, you're not looked at any differently. And I think UT in general is just a very inclusive and welcoming environment you'll find. Um, so not too big, not too small on our campus. What do you offer in a psychology major? Um, so I'm not sure what specifically you're referring to, but I mean, as a psychology student, you're gonna take an array of courses and you might consider pairing psychology with you know, a minor that um, you can kind of tie hand in hand and explore some different internship opportunities with your, um, most of our faculty, I, I may have neglected to mention, have experience in their field. So they really are a good resource for you in your program of study, you know, as a connection and to kind of make sure that you're on the right track and you know what you want to do and you can explore what you're interested in doing. So. I would just recommend um, checking out our website and reading up on the psychology major. And then once you have that faculty advisor and you're in some classes, you'll have a better idea of what you can do with a psychology degree that interests you. Um, this question is, what is Greek housing like? So good question. Um, UT does not have Greek housing. So unofficially, students might get a house off campus that are part of the same sorority or fraternity, which is completely fine. Or for example, I lived with sorority sisters in an apartment on campus sophomore and junior year. So you're kind of living in that environment. But what I like that I like the fact that we didn't have Greek housing because it made for a less um, clicky environment and you really get to mingle with 
a lot of different students. So we did not have um, Greek housing, but if you've been on our campus, you know that unique or unique. University of Tampa is in such a unique urban environment that there really isn't a space for all that housing. We're part of a downtown. So we have a lot more going for us than just kind of this college campus in the middle of nowhere. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I answered most of these. I'll just wait and see if anything else comes in. There's another question about the transition from Illinois to Florida. But so on that subject, what I like to point out is um, I know for myself at Vernon Hills High School, where a lot of um, my friends or just peers were deciding to go to college, you know, everyone's different. So it's all about fit at the end of the day. And are you looking for a big school, medium sized school, small school? Does the university offer your program? You know, it's going to come down to a lot of different factors. Um, but a lot of the times I, I saw students following kind of the masses and just not really exploring any other schools. And so it's great that you're already on here with me tonight because it means you're showing interest in a school outside of Illinois, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Illinois schools, they are great, but it just depends on what you're looking for. And a lot of the times that transition from Illinois to Florida, um, I would hear a lot of, you know, that's so far, or I just want to be close to home. And if you think about it, you can get home in about two hours, or you're really coming home for the major holiday breaks, just as any other student who might be studying in Illinois three hours away, or in Missouri six hours away, you might be able to beat them home on that plane, or you might be coming home just the same amount of time. So it's all about perspective. Uh... Okay, I don't see any more questions. Just let me give it one more minute. If no other questions come in, um, I will wrap it up. We'll let you know what you're all dying to hear. And then um, also, just so you know, if you do have any questions that come up after our session today, you can find my contact info on the UT website. If you go to admissions, find my counselor, put in Illinois as your territory. My name will come up. It'll give you my UT cell number, my office number, my email. You can contact me anytime with any follow up questions. Uh, okay, yeah, that looks like those are all the questions. So, um, what I have for you is if you didn't apply to UT already, I will be offering you a fee waiver. So, if you're attending this session, Right now, live, I will know that you've attended your um, this session. I'll have your name, but I will need you to contact me and let me know that you attended live, and then I'll compare it with the list that I have. Um, and I will send you an application fee waiver, so you can bypass the $40 application fee. Um, you can apply, again, through the Coalition, the Common App, or the UT app. So you can just send me an email. Um, so again, you can go to the website and get my contact information that way. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. My email is V, as in Veronica, and then Urso, U-R-S-O, at ut.edu. So again, that's V, Urso, at ut.edu. You can also find it on the site. Shoot me an email. Let me know you attended. Um, tell me something interesting that you learned tonight, and I will send you a fee waiver. So thank you all for attending. I really appreciate it. Hope that the rest of your um, year goes well. All right, thank you everybody for attending tonight. Um, just a quick reminder, the recording for the session will be available on the IACAC website, um, as well as signing up for any other sessions that you may be interested in. Um, and then once you close uh, this Zoom meeting out, you'll have a very, very quick survey, a four question survey. If you can um, take that and fill that out, that would be great for us. Um, well, thank you so much um, and have a great night.